There he is. Oh, good fish. Good fish. out of here with the trolling motor a little bit. Right next to the boat there. Give him a little lift in. Ah, there's a nice one on the drop shot. Today we're going to do a little something different. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Get this guy on hook. the boat. There he is. Let's see what we got here. Oh, feels like a good fish. Oh yeah, look at that one. Man, that's a nice one. Lift him up here. Just got him in the boat. Don't want him on the floor. Boy, that's a healthy chunk. Whew. Hey, we're out there today. I promise you something different and you're going to get something real different. We're going to talk about all the things that go through my mind when I see a spot. I'm going to pick out my baits. I'm going to tell you about them. It's going to be something really different. And I think I'm going to get this fish unhooked and then, well, let the fishing begin. Now here we are, we're gonna pull up to a shoreline. Now this shoreline has about everything you want on it for a bass. The thing to remember is, I'm gonna start shallow and then work deep. Shallow fish are usually the most active. So what I wanna do is I wanna pick up a spinner bait and I wanna throw it just about parallel down this bank. My first cast or two are gonna be more perpendicular just because of the way the structure sticks out. But as I work down it, I'm going to stay parallel. Now what staying parallel is going to do is it's going to let me keep my lure where I think the strike zone is for a longer time. By fishing a search bait, a quick moving bait like this bomber, I can cover the area quick. Now if I think I missed out or the fish wants something else, I can always switch over to something slower and come back. And that's the plan. What I'm doing is I'm winding it down, little stop and go, little pause. Very few fish do I catch if I'm just straight reel and a crankbait. They used to be called idiot baits because you just threw them out and wound them in. Not anymore. Fish want something changing. Now what happens is my angles are constantly changing as I'm going down the bank. I'm fishing this way, but a whole new angle has opened up back this way. So I can actually turn. You're not stuck to any position. And I can fish now almost parallel back this way. It gives the fish a completely different look to what I first did. Down, crank, crank, crank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this at least 20, 30 casts. I'm gonna fish all the way down to the end of this bank. And if nothing happens, like I said, 
we're going to make a change. This bait's running deep enough that it's deflecting off the bottom for a good amount of the retrieve. And that's important. You want to pick a bait that's going to stay in the strike zone. Right now, I don't know if the fish are shallow, if they're deep, what they're doing. So I'm going to continue casting down the bank. Now you can see that my cast is landing three, four feet off the bank. That's because I can see the bottom on the way in from there. If there were fish in there, I would be able to see them on beds or whatever. So here we go. We're going to continue in. And I'm banging off the bottom. Now you'll notice I'm making nice easy casts. The nice easy casts are because if you're making a long cast, you tend to be much less accurate. So by making short casts, I can make more accurate casts. Now, if I'm thinking that, well, maybe they won't want a crankbait, I can just reach down and I can grab my buzz bait. I can take the buzz bait, throw it parallel down the bank, and there it is. It stays right in the strike zone. I'm not reeling it away from the bank. Most anglers don't fish like that. They fish perpendicular to the bank. And this way my casts are overlapping. Staying in the strike zone, staying close to the bank because that's where I'm checking out first. I think buzz baits gonna work. So I'm going back to the crankbait. As you can see, nice, easy casts. Okay, I've gotten three quarters of the way down this bank. I've got no action on my crankbait. I don't have thick enough cover to where I'm gonna flip or pitch. So my next choice is gonna be a drop shot. And I'm gonna fish this little drop shot worm, little five inch worm, little eighth ounce drop shot weight. I'm just gonna pitch it out Again, not right on the bank because I could see the bank. The water's clear enough to see it. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to shake it. And I'm going to fish it down to this corner. Now the great thing, oh, see now we got, got a sunny bite. Sunny bites tell you something, okay? Sunny bites tell you there's life. There's panfish, probably bait fish, okay? So this is an area that gives me confidence. And that's a great thing about a drop shot. Just about everything that swims except a carp will eat a drop shot. So if you're not getting any bites, any signs of life, you're fishing in a pretty dead area. These are the kind of decisions you need to make as you go while you're fishing. come to a corner in the bank. Now not only are we on a corner of the bank, but you have to understand we've got two different areas coming together. We've got the riprap on the bank and we've got the metal wall. Not only do we have two different types of cover together, but this is also the kind of area where wood, when it gets washed in, will lay up in here. Now again, I got the the sunny's biting on me, so I feel really confident. The drop shot's a great bait. There's not an excess amount of cover in here. I can fish it with the light line. I don't really have to worry too much about breaking a fish off. And, ah, oh, missed one. Could have been a panfish, but it swam right toward the boat. I'm gonna pitch it right back in there. Right in there toward that corner. Nice rocky corner. Bump, bump. Oh yeah, the panfish are in there. I can really feel them. Tap, 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 tap. And another thing I'm noticing is there are panfish suspended out here on the surface. Okay? They're, they might be out here sunning themselves. But what I have here is I have one piece of shade against this wall. You have to notice these slight little differences. Right here, Whoop. Right here against this wall is a little shady area. 
Great spot to drop the drop shot in. Let's see if there's anybody home. Well, I can tell you there's sunfish home. They're eating it. See, now the sunfish has pulled down the worm. Okay, you can't fish with the worm that's kinked up. You have to keep it straight. Number one, it'll twist. Number two, it's not a natural presentation. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next target here. This next target is down this way. Okay, so as we pan over this way, we have a continuation of this wall. My first cast is gonna be a nice short pitch right against the wall. I wanna fish close to me and then steadily further away. The reason for that is that if I cast way up here and hook a fish, that can spook other fish as I'm fighting it out. But if I catch fish closer and cast further, that tends not to spook fish. So let's give another cast a little further down here. Boom. And I'm progressively going to cast further and further as I work my way in. We're on another spot. This spot also has several different types of areas, but the first thing we're going to fish is a steel wall. Now there's a lot of lures that you could choose, but what you really want to use is something that's going to stay close to it, that I can fish almost vertically, and that I can move in and out very quickly. I'm going to pick the drop shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stay almost parallel, and the steel wall really is very plain, but it's got these pilings sticking here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast to each piling along the wall. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. But I'm going to drop it down, a few twitches and shakes, and reel it back up. The important thing to know is when you cast to a wall, if I flick my bail and gear, my line's going to pendulum out away from the wall. What I'm doing is, as I cast in, I want you to watch what I do with the rod tip. I pull the rod tip back, I put the reeling gear, and now I've allowed all this slack line for the lure to fall on. A complete vertical and natural fall. Very important for this type of wall. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the areas that are different. No sense in fishing a long straight wall, but I am going to fish the pilings as we come along it. Now what this does is it allows me to eliminate structure. Now I just found a little piece of wood or something in the water with that cast. Not only do we have a piling here, but we have something that's washed up into that corner that was potentially a good spot. Again, we have another piling here, but this piling is much bigger. Again, I pulled line off the reel, it sunk straight down, and down, 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 going down. Shake, 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 nothing. Now we've come to a transition in the wall. This wall's turned. And you can see that down this wall is a shade line. So this shade line now becomes like cover. So anywhere where I throw next to a piling, not only do I have cover, but I have a shade line. And we want to keep our bait in that shade line because that's where the fish are going to lay. Now, the worm's messed up. Have to make sure it's dead straight. Now your worm needs to be straight for two reasons. Number one, it's more natural, but number two, a worm that's bent or kinked will spin and it'll spin your line up. So you'll get bad line twist with a worm that's not straight. Again, down along the piling. And as we come through here, we're going to come to another transition. This wall is going to end. The end of a wall can be a great spot. Just pitch in there into the corner. 
twitch, twitch. Now, when we're fishing a drop shot, okay, watch my rod. I'm really not doing a lot. I'm not hopping it like crazy. I'm not doing a lot of reeling. The wind blowing and just a natural tremor in your hand will work the worm. I'm coming through some wood. Now as we come down to the bank, the bank flattens out. That means I probably want to switch baits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a spinner bait. Half ounce white spinner bait, Colorado blades, and a trailer hook. The bank is flatter, so I can cover more water faster. It's also an area that's, that's a little bit more barren of cover. So now, instead of sitting here dragging our worm on dead bottom, we can fish all the little pieces of cover, we can fish through the shade, and then when we get to another area where there's going to be targets, we can go to a slower moving bait. Now the whole time I'm fishing, I'm looking in the water. What am I looking for in the water? I'm looking for the presence of bait fish. I'm looking for a bass cruising. I'm looking for a bass on a bed. I'm looking, for, I'm looking for a log that might be sticking out. Any one of those things can change the lure I'm fishing in a moment's notice. Fish down the side of this dock. Now we didn't quite make that cast perfect and we want to run right down the side of the dock, right under that corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my rod around this side of the boat and that's going to cause the spinner bait to cut the corner and swim under the dock. Watch, I'll show you again. I'm going to cast here, I'm going to let the spinner bait sink a little bit and then I'm going to drop my rod tip. By dropping my rod tip, That'll allow the spinner bait to come under the dock. Now I could see back in here there's a little bit of wood, so I'm going to make a few more casts with the spinner bait. Again, on the dock. Boom, 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 boom. Nothing. We just pulled up on this bank. It's a pretty steep little bank, and it's a chunk rock bank. The first thing that came into my mind was a crankbait. I can take the crankbait, I can bounce it off the rocks, off the cover, and the nice thing is fish could be tight up against the bank. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue fishing just about parallel. Let's see if this works. I want you to look at something here. We're in a marina, it's full of pilings. And all the pilings have nothing around them except for this one. It's got this junk washed up around it. This is the perfect little target area to come in and pitch next to and possibly pick off a fish. Now I don't expect fish to be hanging around all the pilings. But if you find one that's got this, and I mean a tree washed up around it, it's something different. It's isolated cover, and it only takes you a couple of seconds to toss in there, find out if there's one home. It wasn't this time, but that doesn't mean there won't be one next time. One more cast. Right against that tree. Drop it. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Well, it's empty this time. Here's a great little piece of cover we're coming up on. We have an area where part of a dock is sunken. Now, what I would like to do is I'd like to toss my drop shot in there. But I've got metal, I've got fiberglass, and I've got a rope going across it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the flipping stick. Now this rod I can pitch into there, and I can be relatively sure that I can get a fish out of here. I've got very heavy line. I got 20 pound line on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself four, five, six little pitches up in here just to see what's here. And I can, I can make a little roll cast pitch and fish it down the base. What's important is you get that vertical fall. You want your presentation to come down right along the edge. 
because not only do you have cover, but you've got shade here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to slowly pick it apart, try not to make a splash as the bait hits the water. Great little spot. Got some stuff floating on top. Then while we're here, we move over to the right a little bit and we have the corner of this dock and the walkway. Again, another good spot. Now something we haven't talked about is boat control. Being able to come up to these spots to fish and not blow on top of them. In this case, I'm actually using the rope that's in the water to hold the boat from drifting into the object I'm fishing. This way I can stay here and I can make multiple presentations without the fear of washing in on where the fish are. A lot of people think that if you're pitching and flipping or worm fishing, you want a low speed reel. That couldn't be further from the truth. I prefer a reel like this loose reel that I'm using. This loose reel has a six one to one gear ratio. Now they make a seven one to one, which is even faster. But a six one to one allows me to get into an area, fish a few times, shake, 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 and then burn the lure back and right back out again. That's the advantage of a high speed reel. You get more casts in during a day. A lot of people don't think about that. They think they only want a high speed reel for a buzz bait or a crank bait. Like I said, couldn't be further from the truth. Now, I've talked about a lot of things today, but one of the things I haven't mentioned is boat control, or at least boat control and positioning. When you're fishing an area, especially if there's any kind of cover that you want to fish thoroughly, you need to be able to position your boat. What I'm doing here is I'm fishing into the wind so that if I hook a fish, the wind will push me back this way away from the cover if there's another piece of you know if there's another fish on the piece of cover the other thing is it allows me to pinpoint precision when i'm push, positioning the boat what i'll do is i come into the wind i stop the motor i can think about how much the motor is going to drift where i'm going to drift i've got a piling in the water in front of me i can make multiple casts of that piling and not worry about drifting over it or spooking the fish. Very, very, very important. Because a lot of times, these bass are target oriented. They're positioned on little bits and pieces of cover. I'm gonna fish, I'm gonna shake, and I'm gonna move on. Now as I move on, I can drift back toward this piece of cover and not worry. On the other hand, if I was coming from that direction, blowing with the wind down, I can come down the bank, I don't have to use my motor, but then again, I'm at the mercy of where the wind takes me. Well, something's going on here. Ugh. Feels like it was a panfish though. There we go. Nice one. Now, we pulled up on this spot, and by this time of the day, it's not a bad little fish. Let's get them back. I'm going to talk about this. By this time of the day, we've gone through all the let's try this, let's try that, and we're starting to refine what's going on. Pulled up on the spot, already knew what's going on. We're catching a fish on a drop shot we're catching them shallow. There was no reason to pick up the crankbait, the spinnerbait. The fish have already told us what's going on. The only thing that's left to find out is how many fish are on this spot, and that's what I intend to find out. So I'm getting another one. There he is. Oh, it's another good one. Another real good one.
going. Just laid them down pretty good. There we go. Well, I hope I've followed through with what we said today. Nice fish to end the day. Different type of show. Hopefully, now you know the things that I think about when I'm out on the water, the kind of decisions I make, and all those things that go into trying to be successful. Hey, come out, see us on TV, Facebook, Twitter, and you know what? Until next time, I'm Steve Horvath, and I'll see you in the water. Let's get this guy back. That'll make the blooper real. That'll be on the end of the show. Just the sunny.